the rituals of cottaging, a frank and revealing visit to the men's room. I think the first decision you have to make is what you're going to say if you're with other people. Are you going to the bog, the loo, the toilet, the lavatory, the convenience, latrine, the closet, cottage, outhouse, privy, urinal, going for a slash, have a waz, have a pee. Wrestle with the trouser snake. Shake hands with the wife's best friend. Test the depths of the water. Peas are very popular. Point Percy at the porcelain. <laughs> I guess there must be a certain point at which it's no longer considered that appropriate for you to go in your, with your mother. Maybe it's because now you're no longer an infant, you have to be a trainee man. Therefore, you've got to go in your father. You've got to get into that stage. That's where you pick up all the sort of rites of passage information that you need for later on. If there's somebody there, you want to be at least one away from the next person. Don't ask me why. OK, so now you've found your position. Where are you going to look? The choices are look straight ahead at the blank wall, the Zen approach. Or look down. The childish approach, watch the pee as it gurgles away down the urinal drain. Or, worst of all, look to your left and lay yourself open to the suspicion that you're a willy watcher. Willy watching is the absolute taboo. Probably the only thing worse than being willy watched is being thought to be a willy watcher. It's one of the things that has led, I think, to the favouring of these discrete units. This is particularly charming. If you're going and then the water happens at the same time, that's particularly good. I always think that that's just something of a good omen. Does this kind of thing happen very often? Yes. It happens every, every day of the week. It's, I, I walk here five days in the week, and five days I have to face this type of a thing. Does it not make you feel sick? Well, that's why I have to lick uh, a, a lot of mints. Who uses the toilet? Various people, several people, different with different uh, social backgrounds, Pe people with different beliefs. They come in here, but um, there's nothing you can do to stop them from coming here because this is a public place and they belong to, they too are members of the public. There are some of them who belong to uh, a group uh, of homosexuals. If you have a perfect silence, you know something is going on. And if I open the door through to it, I miss a lot of them there holding their thing. It is not legal. The council does not condone it at all. Even though we embrace the equal opportunity, 
but we don't. Uh, uh, the council does not uh, encourage the use of public place for their act. The word cottage is gay slang for a public entry. Normally they look like uh, little cottages with uh, a little roof on top and they blend in very nicely into the proceedings, into little parks. I've had many experiences with married men, with men who are bisexual, men who are not sure about their sexuality. I've been in cottages where doors have been opened and there's been a man of 75 standing there in, in a full Anne Summers lingerie outfit. It's the most important code of cottaging. Do not talk. Do not speak. So if I go into a cottage and people are talking, I would know instantly that this is not a trade cottage. If I go into a cottage and there's an air of silence and sexual excitement, then I know that I'm in the right place. my piece of trade into the cottage, I now give him a bag. And while he's getting into the bag, I make sure that the holes on the door are stuck up, so I put the curtains up to make sure that I have complete security. And the reason for this is because the policeman or an attendant may look underneath the door, and all they'll see is one pair of shoes and the fact that I've been shopping this morning. What they can't see is, in fact, I'm giving this particular person oral sex if he wishes it and I'm in a nice kind of comfortable position. I think a lot of people are attracted to cottaging because it's sleazy and it's the kind of thing that a lot of people don't like to admit to liking and that in a way is part of its attraction and, be and it reminds you of a time in your life when sex was dirty and rude, and so it's actually quite comforting. It's a little bit like eating nanny food, only in this case it's nanny sex. The motion for debate tonight is this House will welcome a return to traditional family values. Opposing the motion are Lady Young, Mary Penny, Sir Anthony Beaumont Dart, and the Earl of Longford. Opposing the motion, Toby Lewis, ex-president of Gordon, Dave O'Neill to Cats and Executive Committee, Nick Little at CCC Extra and Nuffield, and Sue Slipman. I think, I think that's not what's happening here. It's a toughie, new bow tie. Yeah, I need to put wearing in, right? No, that's fine. Yeah. This is the one room where nudity, to some, uh, to some respect, um, is acceptable. Um, men come together, they stand next to each other in, as, as fellow humans, as brothers even, and perform that act which I believe is, well, is fundamental to human condition. The formality of the debating chamber is left outside when men come in here, whether you be David Icke, um, Robin Day, Enoch Powell. A lot of what's called hacking, political hacking, does happen here. The simple line of, you know, you're a nice chap, I like you, will you vote for me? That sort of thing happens here. Now, that's the person who's running for office is using this very private male space in order to gain some sort of advantage, an advantage that doesn't exist in the public arena outside. Do you often sit in the loo and um, listen to what people are saying? Oh yes, quite often. It's the, uh, it's the best place to um, find out what's happening politically, especially among uh, potential opponents, whilst they're at the UN, or then you can sit here and uh, get all the private gossip. And do you think you're going to kind of use this tactic throughout the rest of your life? Well, I, if, if the laboratories in other places are as uh, easy to use as these ones, um, in that sort of wall doesn't extend to the ceiling so you can overhear conversations, then I should think so, yes. Thank you very much.
For the booklet which accompanies this series, send a check or postal order for £2.25, payable to Channel 4, to Men Only, PO Box 4000, London W3 6XJ. Mm-hmm.